joined by political analyst Jesse Murmel and Jeff Simone. She's the Democrat, he's the Republican. Welcome to both of you. It would be funny if it were true. The speech, just giving it, that it actually happened. It's like Beethoven's fifth when he yeah. does that. He's he's singing right to me because he's got to convert people like me. Yeah. Um, Donald Trump is good in front of a teleprompter for Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, you know, he managed to pull it together today. Uh, what worries me is what he does tonight. Yes, yeah, one out of five. And, what day are we on? What day is it? Yeah. It's Wednesday, yeah. so he's, he's We've got one plenty of time for him to go back to normal week. Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. And I think he's good in front of a teleprompter if you like hostage videos. He was stiff and robotic. He was clearly following someone's instructions. You know what? I'm today. actually going to give it to Jeff because I think he, if, if he weren't lying as much as he was lying <laughs> and you focused on a couple of the points that he could actually get some traction on, it wasn't so bad. But, you know, someone said today, one of the, the, uh, the, the fact checkers that Donald Trump's statements overall are 59% false and Clinton's are 12% false. So it's sort of like that Star Trek episode where Spock says Vulcans cannot lie, I am telling a lie. I mean, it makes your head explode. Yeah. The New York Times homepage today, when you clicked on the story about this speech, called it a, a series of misleading and untrue statements strung together, or I'm paraphrasing. But Let's, let's scratch to a couple of the points that Donald made that are true. The conflict with the Clinton Foundation while she was Secretary of State, does that speak to you? I, I think Bernie Sanders has brought that up during, mm -hmm. during his campaign. Um, that's, a known, uh, that's a known entity. Uh, you had the scandal of a, a couple weeks ago that was really kind of went under the radar with, I think, Rajiv Fernando, who, was, who got an appointment during the Clinton um, secretary, when she was a Secretary of State, uh, and it turned out he was a, a donor and had zero experience to do that. Once it came to light, he resigned the next day. I mean, there, there's a pattern here that it, Donald Trump puts forth uh, very inartfully, but it doesn't mean it's not true. No, and, no, and this, I, this, I this kind of gets back on that because there's Hillary Clinton never solicited those donations, and there is not any evidence that the policies mm -hmm. she's enacted in secretary as Secretary of State were in any way reflected to the completely separate work that was happening at the Clinton Foundation. This, Look at Saudi Arabia, this, where not, Donald Trump is talking about their record with girls and women. This in the court she of actually law. pushed back on Saudi Arabia um, and was it, incredibly strong with them about the record with girls and women. So, did the Clinton Foundation, a separate entity, solicit donations? Yes. Did that impact Hillary? Clinton's work as Secretary of State? No. You can't, the, the idea that we're trying to prove this in a court of law it isn't the case here. There's no, there's no provable collusion necessarily. I mean, look, Trump pointed to the Clinton cash uh, book that came out by Schweitzer. Um, it, there's a lot of inference and a lot of circumstantial evidence, a lot of it. Now, can you bring that to, you know, is she going to be prosecuted for that? No, probably not. But it only adds to the narrative well, that she's dishonest and she's corrupt. Now, I mean, look, when Donald Trump says stuff like that, I'm going to agree with him. You know, while I don't like a but lot of what he says on But here's the challenge, though, is, and this is not just in this race, it happens fairly often, probably not often enough, but one of them has a, a record of public service and one of them doesn't. You know, Hillary Clinton has been in public service for the vast majority of her adult life in one way or another, and he has been in business, and while he's saying, you know, business, bankruptcies, that's what businesses do, I get sued all the time, you know, she can't necessarily say, well, yeah, being accused by, you know, this or that, it, that happens all the time. So there's an unfair apples to apples there. No? She's been in public service, and she is worth now hundreds of millions of dollars through paid speeches, uh, by corporations, by foreign governments. How much is Laura Bush worth? I have no idea. <laughs> Laura Bush isn't running for president. No. Hillary Clinton is. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's why it's important. Look, um, if it, somebody could prosecute the case of tit for tat, mm -hmm. um, taking money for, uh, for special favors, uh, they probably would try to do so. But, there's, but this is why she has a private server. This is why there's obf obfuscation well, but around Hillary Clinton can speak for herself. So she responded to uh, Trump during a campaign stop in North Carolina. Here is her reply to his attack on the Clinton Foundation. Well, it's no surprise he doesn't understand these things. The Clinton Foundation helps poor people around the world get access to life-saving AIDS medicine. <laughs> Donald Trump uses poor people around the world to produce his line of suits and ties. 
Oh, nothing like a little sweatshop there, well, Jesse. Well, listen, what he said today played right into the messaging that we've been hearing from the Clinton campaign, really for the past week or so, but especially after her very strong uh, economic attack on uh, on Donald Trump yesterday. And so this was just a, an excellent point for her to springboard after her message from yesterday. He played right into her hand. There's, Jeff, there's been a more calm, even-keeled Hillary Clinton, I think, in this in this pivot, pivot, as they say in Friends, uh, to, to the general election, where she's She's not yelling, you know. She doesn't seem angry like those those criticisms she had. Is are we now getting to the balance for both candidates where he'll be using a teleprompter, she won't be yelling, there'll be a little bit more moderation, you yeah, think? Her tone and theme definitely suits her better doing this than than the loud rallies that were before. I mean that's that's obvious to a lot of folks. The the difference now is is you're going one on one. And uh, this is going to be a slugfest. You know, she came out yesterday uh, with a speech that eviscerated Trump on all the attack lines that she can go after him. Trump hits back today with even more outrageous stuff. Um, you can call him out on the take for a lot of the falsehoods he does, but is it is because of what happened in the primary where it wasn't really held to account going to the factor now? I, I believe it. He's almost immune to, to not having to come up with actual factual well, information, you know, and that's a problem. An interesting contrast that I just want to point out, every time Hillary Clinton attacks him on substance, her foreign policy speech a week or so ago, her economic policy speech yesterday, he comes back and attacks her. He doesn't come out and outline his own policies because he doesn't have any. He doesn't come out and uh, defend his own record because he knows it's indefensible. He always pivots and tries to distract people, and we're seeing a pattern He here. has to go personal. He has to go personal. I mean, if he goes on his record, which isn't very substantial. Is that going to help him expand? I mean, he needs to, both of them have to expand their voter base in order to win in November. Is is that going to be just displeas dis so displeasant to people? Well, you know what's interesting? He actually called for a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters to come to his side during this yep. speech. And he also echoed some of his talking points against free trade, uh, uh, you know, more populist message. Uh, that might appeal to some Sanders supporters. It might appeal to people you wouldn't expect that normally might might go for a Democrat, but well, might support Donald thanks Trump. Thanks to both of you for coming in, following you on Twitter. <laughs> Love both of you. You're both objective and uh, passionate, so it's appreciated. Right thanks back, back, back in. All right, next.